Welcome back, peeps, to Let's Play Lost Horizon with me, Pixie Poison. So, in the last video, we found out that to get into the Olympic Stadium, we need a press pass. And we managed to get one in a rather underhanded way from a journalist who was sitting here by suggesting there was scandal in the British royal family. <gasps> Gasp! But now we have a press pass. Unfortunately, we don't look an awful lot like him. Edison's press pass. <laughs> We're not too dissimilar. But the photo shows him sporting a goatee, glasses, and a hat. Well, we've got the glasses at least, but we need to get the rest of the things. So, first of all, let's start with the goatee. We need to go back to the museum for this. Uh -huh, because there's something in here that will give us a rather fetching goatee. Goatee. Get it? No, sorry. Uh, but anyway, as you can see, it's got some nice I whiskers. I a beard like that when Kim and I were friendly. She got me drunk one night and shaved it off. <laughs> okay. Well, obviously we don't want to rip the whiskers off, so we'll use something quite sharp. We'll use the broken bottle to take it off nicely. This guy owes me a favor. The least he can do is spare me some whiskers. There we go. And in lieu of glue, let's let's use something equally sticky. That sounds wrong. The whiskers to but anyway, there we are. We have some sticky whiskers that we can put on. But we now need a hat. And the one place we can get the hat is back at the stadium. Because, if we remember, this organ grinder here, he has a very nice looking hat. That hat would make me look a lot more like Edison. Okay. Hello, it's me again. Hi there. Don't worry, you haven't missed much. Hmm. By the way, I really like your hat. Really? I hardly ever wear it. I just use it to collect money. Hmm. It doesn't really seem to be fulfilling its purpose, does it? And you're saying that's the hat's fault? <laughs> it looks a bit greasy. Maybe that's putting your customers off. Oh, you might be right. It really doesn't look very clean, does it? If you give me your hat, I'll give you something even better in return. A connoisseur of old greasy hats, are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you can give me something good to replace it, you can have the hat. Alright then. Well, we do have a metal bowl, but it's not quite good enough. Well, we'll say bye. Have a look around the city. Have fun. Right, it's a bit rusty. A rusty rubbish bin lid. We want to make it look nicer. We have the sandpaper. Let's give it a scrub. Rust free. There we are. Nice one. Okay. How about this instead? You like it? I've got this polished metal bowl that absolutely isn't a rubbish bin lid. <laughs> Wouldn't it be better for collecting money than your old hat? Hmm. Let me see that. Yes. This is good. It's sturdy and it looks a damn sight better than my old hat. So you want to trade? Gladly. Here, take the thing. Thanks. Nice one. Okay, so now we have a hat, glasses, and a makeshift goatee. However, we've got a press pass, but we don't have any kind of press equipment whatsoever. I.e. a camera or anything. But there is a way we may obtain it. So, let's head back to the Paritza Platz. And look, see this guy here? And what's in front of him? A tourist snapping the Brandenburg Gate. Hmm, funny that. Well, we may have something interesting for that. Okay, so let's go and have a natter with him. Careful! Do not touch my camera! Don't worry, I had no intention of touching anything. I spent a great many hours painstakingly setting up that camera. And it would be a catastrophe if you were to move it by so much as a hair. Please forgive my curiosity. Allow me to introduce myself. Fenton Paddock. A pleasure. Count Otto von Droste Schattenwald. <coughs> a count with a camera, eh? Wouldn't say, uh, an adding machine be a more appropriate device? Please. I would be much obliged if you would not trivialize our conversation with such banal wordplay. <laughs> I'm a renowned photographer from Vienna. 
Have you never heard of me? To be honest, no, I haven't. But maybe that's because I live in Hong Kong. My work has also been exhibited in Hong Kong, sir. Oh. Oh! That Count Otto van Dross Schattenberger. <laughs> Go on. What are you taking pictures of? I'm shooting images for my latest photographic series, Berlin and the Olympic Games. This work will be subtitles of forgotten landmarks. I intend to capture locations that are not currently the main focus of public interest. I see. Unfortunately, artistic freedom is becoming a thing of the past in Berlin. Photography is often banned in public squares or even in entire districts. Hmm. This does not make my work any easier. Hmm, quite. Why isn't it allowed? What's the deal with these photography bans? All political reasons. The government officials here believe there are certain parts of the city that may be unrepresentative of the capital's overall charm. Ah. The Brandenburg Gate's okay, right? That's correct. The gate is to be the central focus of my latest project. A photography ban here would mean all my months of preparation were for naught. Several galleries have already booked the exhibit in advance. No, a ban here would be absolutely outrageous. But then, the Count von Drost de Schattenburg isn't just anybody. Even here, I have friends in high places. Why, I would go straight to the magistrate and make my mind known. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we've gained some information. Obviously, we know his camera looks very professional, and we want it. But we'll, well leave him for I now. To keep you from your work any longer. Thank you. But we need to do a few things first. Now, notice we have a ketchup stain here on this table. It's rather conspicuous, isn't it? Who spilled the ketchup? Come on, own up. <laughs> Well, let's take a little bit of that, just to clean it up, a bit of course. Of tidiness never hurt anyone. Uh, apart from that one time I tried to clean the office and broke my collarbone. <laughs> Long story. Okay, there we go. Makes it nice and tidy, although we now have a dirty napkin. But that's okay. That's okay. Okay, we want to go back to the museum now, because there is something else there that we need. Okay, so, let's have a look what we have here. What do we have? Aha! There we are. Nice one. Okay, I was just checking what, what I had and what I don't have. But, let's go inside. Come on, you can, you can do a bit quicker than that, darling. Right. Okay. Now, what we want to do, now, bear with me on this, this is going to sound very strange, but we need to have a look at these double doors, right here. The only interesting things about this door are its large, round handles, and even they're struggling to get my heart racing. <laughs> right, we want to put this napkin on the handles, right here. So... Now the worn doorknob is completely red again. I'm a stickler for the little details. <laughs> okay. Now what we want to do is... See this poster we have a here? Camera ad. We want to use this on the doorknob. Because look at the shape of it. If I press the poster against the doorknob, it produces... an interesting new symbol on my poster. Hmm... <laughs> See, there we are. We have a ketchup poster, which makes it look like we have a photography ban. So, we are going to do that. We're going to go back. There we are. Now, obviously, we don't have any glue to put this poster up, but we do have our ever trusty sticky lolly. I'll rub the lolly on the back of the poster so I can hang it up somewhere. That's fine, okay. Now, this seems like a good a place as any. On the traffic sign. Have a look. Okay. Let's see if this works. <laughs> oh, hey. Hello, Count. Oh, you again. Yes. Count, terrible, terrible news. 
I just discovered there's a photography ban throughout Parisa Platz. What are you saying? Where is that written? Follow me, I'll show you. Ooh, this is so underhanded. <laughs> you see? Up there. Unbelievable! Outrageous! I am furious! Young man, you must look after my camera while I resolve this issue. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Count. Uh, sorry, Count, but you're a bit of an idiot, because you've just left your camera and we're so taking it. <laughs> the ends justify the means. I hope. I certainly hope too. Okay, we have everything we need now. So, we'll head back. Okay, shall we put on... Shall we put on our things? Oh, maybe... Mm, maybe we can actually do it this time. Okay. Okay, I've got yeah, everything I there need. We go. Press pass, camera, hat, glasses, and the pièce de résistance, of course. The Argali beard. Time <laughs> to get suited and booted. But other than that, it was easy. <laughs> Passed the guard, found the locker room, and here I am. Well, that's a lovely story, Fenton. But why? Look, we don't have much time, so I'll get straight to the point. I read that you're leading the decathlon, and you're just about to complete the last event. The long jump? Well, if you win the gold medal, you'll be invited to the reception after the contest. The museum where the reception is taking place is closed due to the event. No visitors allowed. I need to get in there and look around as soon as possible. I hate to repeat myself, but... Why, right? I know, I know. I've asked myself the same thing a couple of dozen times. <laughs> Do you remember Richard Weston? Of course! You two helped me pass that test, remember? What about him? He disappeared, and his trail leads to the museum. Well, the story is much longer than that. But for now, I have to ask you to trust me. So, can you smuggle me in? Absolutely. I couldn't leave an old Sandhurst chum in a bind, now could I? Thanks, Glenn. I owe you one. Of course, you are assuming one vital thing. <coughs> that I win. Frankly, I've still got a slight lead, but the long jump just isn't my forte. That Erwin Huber in second place will likely pull past me at the last minute. He's the better jumper by far. He's beaten me every time this year. So your lead won't be enough to secure the goal? I doubt it. Huber always manages about 25 centimetres more than I do. If he's up to his usual standard today, and I don't manage the jump of my life, then those 25 centimetres will be enough for him to take the lead. I see. I suppose I'll just have to cross my fingers. Why don't you introduce yourself to Huber? You could be his date for the reception. Oh, come on. He's probably not my type. <laughs> and I am. Beggars can't be choosers. Very funny. Look, I'll give it my best shot. We'll just have to hope it's enough. <sighs> Look at the time. I have to get moving. I'll see you after the jump. Well, Fenton, I've got to head out to the contest. I'm already running late. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Good luck. Thanks. I'll need it. Okay, so at the moment we're just crossing our fingers and hope, but of course, cheating would never cross my mind. There's too much at stake. I need to get into the museum. So, business as usual. <laughs> I'll take a look around and come up with a plan. I need to tip the long jump in Glenn's favor. Funny. I honestly never expected a Tibetan rescue mission to involve rigging the Olympic Games. Still, Silver linings and all that. <laughs> but of course we're going to go to underhanded means. What else would we do? Okay, so we need to have another look in the locker room. For a start, there's bound to be stuff here. Well, there's a pair of trainers there. I'm sure they can be useful. Nothing I can do with a pair of smelly trainers. The shoelaces, on the other hand, look absolutely essential. Of course. So... And let's see, a blue jersey. A towel! Definitely a towel could be useful. I'm not touching it. Oh. 
Might as well be eyeing up women back at Shen's. Okay, well, there's some clean ones here, by the look of it. Intuition, if you like. But I'm taking this towel. Okay. Okay, let's have a look around here. Metal coat hooks. Any chance we can take one? This hook here seems to be loose. Oh, well, what a coincidence. Got it. What a coinky dink. Okay. And there's also a ventilation grill. Ah, <gasps> can we climb a in? Ventilation grate. I can see a weak light on the other side. Uh, any chance we can get that open with this? Just needed a bit yes, of Yes, there is. That's all. The grate's off. Okay. Let's head on in then. Ah, it's the equipment room. Ah, lovely. All right then. Let's see what we get. A whole load of sporting equipment and measuring devices. Stopwatches, batons, several table tennis balls, and a measuring tape. Measuring tape, you say? Well, we did hear that Glenn needed an extra 25 centimetres. A measuring tape. Then, let's have a look at it. Could be useful. Let's have a look. A competition-sanctioned measuring tape. Yes, can you... Mm. Never mind. Okay, let's have a see. More lockers. Can we get them open? They're all locked. Oh, damn it. Okay, well... Let's see. Oh, hello. What do we have here? With my fingers? Really? <laughs> I mean, that never works, does it? Okay, whatever. It's a metal plate screwed into the side of the locker. Okay, well... Would... Would it work twice? If I can loosen the metal plate, maybe I can open this left-hand locker. I'll need to attack the screws, though. And the coat hook's got a rounded end. <sighs> Damn it. Okay, well, what do we have over here? Two javelins and some hammer-throwing and shot-put equipment. The shelf's feet are screwed to the floor. That's some heavy-duty storage. Indeed it is. Hmm. Okay. Well, this has a rounded end. Would this work here? I can't use the coat hook to loosen the screws. Yet. Maybe leaving it here will help. Somehow. <laughs> okay. Alright, well. We've left it there. Let's see. Hmm. I think I have an idea. Let's just use the shoelaces that we have here. Let's give that a tie. Okay. It's all tied up. Okay, let's grab one of these. I dabbled in athletics when I was at the academy. I remember all too well how heavy these things are. You'll understand if I don't fancy carrying them around with me. Alright, we'll take the dumbbells I'll instead just then. Take one of these with me. <laughs> It's one of them. I remember it's one of them. There we are. That should do. Can that get that off? Time to get to work. Like I said, it's a staple of point and click adventure games, peeps. You do the most convoluted things possible. <laughs> it worked. The end's now flattened out. Okay. So now we have a sharp edge. This should help us get them screws off. Now that it's flat. This makes for a pretty decent screwdriver. Let's get this panel loose. Ta-da! I present to you the inside of a locker. <laughs> Lovely. And what do we have here? Looks like a judge's uniform. Swish. Oh, you know we are taking this, peeps. We are so taking it. Yoink! A that is mine. Uniform. Okay, so now that we have this, we are in a position to duck to that tape. So, we'll head back in here so that we're not caught being somewhere we shouldn't be. But, let us have a look at this tape. So obviously, he needs 25 centimeters. Well, we have a makeshift pair of scissors here. Let's get slicing. Hmm, I could use the sharp edge to cut the measuring tape and then... Alter it. Won't be long before Glenn discovers his inner champion. 
Okay, so now we've got a meter of tape, and we've got a little bit left. I cut exactly one meter off the measuring tape. Okay, cool. Well, let us cut it a little bit more, I think. Let's shorten it down a bit. I sense, yes, I rather sense a plum taking shape. I'll cut another 25 centimeters off the one meter piece. That's the exact length Glenn needs to beat his competitor's best distance. All right. So now we have two sets of tape here, which is good. Now we're going to need something to put them back together. So let's go have a look around. There's a bottle in the rubbish bin. Yes, there is. Let's take it. A bottle of cleaner. A bottle of cleaner, hmm? Huh? What's in it? A bottle of cleaner? Not that I'm about to pay any heed to what a bottle tells me to do, but it says, removes even the most stubborn stains. Warning, do not use on plastic surfaces. Contains the solvent acetone. Ah, funny that, okay. Well, let's have a look. What do we have? What else is in there? The bin's empty. Is it? Okay. Well, let me see. Okay, we need something then that we can melt, something plastic. Okay. Hmm. I don't think we have anything plastic. We don't want to melt our press pass, that's literally the only reason we're in here. But, hmm. It melts plastics. Is there anything else in here that we didn't have? Anything? Tennis balls? Five table tennis balls. Wait, table tennis balls are plastic? I'm sure no one will miss them. Those are plastic. We got it. We got what we need. Okay. Right. Okay. Let us put them on them. The cleaner contains acetone. According to the label, this solvent shouldn't come into contact with plastics. My destructive tendencies are encouraging me to do precisely <laughs> that. Hence, the table tennis balls. But if it melts plastic, I could only imagine what it does to human skin. I need a container of some kind. Okay, that's sound thinking. Okay, let's put them in the bin. Because bins usually back then were metal, so the should be fine. Pretty sturdy. Should be a good container for my little experiment. Wish I could say this was the first time I've done something like this. The solvent's dissolving the balls. All that's left is a sticky mush and a fierce stench. It smells a bit like thorn apple. Okay. Well, we've got some makeshift glue now, so. If we use this that we have, let's get a bit of glue on there. I can probably glue this back onto the original tape. I guess the molten plastic will do the job. Okay. There we are. Okay, so if we put that back together. Perfect. I'll glue the shortened piece back onto the original roll. Job done. Nice, okay. So we have that now. Okay, so let's have a look at it. I made a good job of it. The tape short by a whole 25 centimeters. I'm sure they don't check these things that carefully. All right. Okay, so we need to get that altered tape up to the judges box somehow. So, let us have a look. Let's have a look in here. We have a dodgy light here. The lamp's seen better days. It's flickering and sparking. Okay. Well, maybe we can use that to our advantage. We got some nice kindling here. The spark set the flowers alight. Nice. And we also have some little torches right here. Let's set these alight. Let's make a grand entrance. Yes, that is where a torch is supposed to go. But then it would burn the cables above it. I'm not sure that's such a great idea. At least, not right now. Hmm. Huh. Okay. A 
thick bundle of cables running out into the stadium. Well. Well. Yes. Yes. That is where a torch is supposed to go. But then it would burn the cables above it. I'm not sure that's such a great idea. Hmm. At least not right now. Well, let's see what's going on at least. I've got the rig measuring tape ready, but to make this work, I've got to smuggle it into the long jump area somehow. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now approaching the grand finale of the Olympic Decathlon. In just a few moments, Erwin Huber of Germany will step up to compete. I'd like to ask for quiet from the stands so that the athletes can concentrate. An excellent effort. That was quite a jump. Could Erwin Huber have beaten his own record? Huh. Seven fifty. Seven meters and fifty centimeters. Seven meters and fifty centimeters. Fantastic. Erwin Huber has topped his own personal best. This will make it very, very difficult for Glenn Parker to defend his lead in the overall standings. Parker is heading to the track. In just a few minutes, his performance in the long jump will determine the gold medal decathlon winner. I'm really running out of time here. I've got to swap the tape, but I'll struggle as long as those two judges are still standing over it. Okay, well now we see where these cables lead, at least. This cable powers the lights and things out on the track. Well, now we have an excuse. Now we know why we can burn those cables. Let's do it. Go on. Nothing to do. Uh, yes there is. Good plan, Fenton. The fire gradually burns through the cables, then the lights on the long jump area go out, interrupting the event, and I'm long gone before anyone realizes what happened. Let's be honest, <laughs> that's the best bit. <laughs> Fabulous. Let's get out of here. Berlin is holding its collective. Okay. Breath. The final decision in the decathlon is rapidly approaching. Glenn Parker is warming up on the track for his decisive jump. I'd like to ask the spectators in the stands to remain quiet because. One moment. We seem to be experiencing technical difficulties in the long jump. Score. Area. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Can you hear me? What's wrong? What do you think is wrong? There's a complete power failure in this part of the stadium. Must be another problem with the cables. I'll go check. Come with me. I might need your help. Shouldn't the technician take care of it? Sure, in about three hours' time. We can't put the Olympic Games on hold. <laughs> Can you keep an eye on things while we try to fix the problem? But of course. Just leave everything in my capable hands. <laughs> suckers! Absolute suckers! <laughs> well, peeps, they've left it in our capable hands, and we are well poised to deliver Glenn Parker his winning long jump in the next video. So, see you there, peeps.